guys, it's Chelsea from The Financial Diet. And today I want to talk about trendy purchases that you shouldn't do because they're not worth it and you'll regret it. And a big part of the reason why I want to do this video right now, especially, is because as we all re-emerge into the world, I am coming at you live with one Moderna shot in the bag. A couple weeks from now, I'm gonna be getting my second one. As we re-emerge into society, vaxxed, waxed, taxed, and <laughs> listen, we all have been skimming on our beauty regimens. No, but in all seriousness, we are re-emerging into society. It is going to be a hot girl summer part two, the hottening. <laughs> and not a white boy summer, let's clear that up. That was not cool. But suffice to say, it's gonna be a summer where people are so excited to be out and doing things. Every purchase is going to seem justifiable from the experiences you've been missing out on to the clothes that you wanna wear while having those experiences it's all gonna be one big case of the shoppies. And it's gonna be so easy to justify a lot of these purchases with, well, I haven't been spending a lot of money in the past year, so why not go all out? And statistically, it is true that people who did keep their employment ended up saving more in 2020 than they did in years prior, but that is not a reason to just completely blow all of your hard work and go back into the red. So it's good that we start off with what might prove to be a very heavy spending season by talking about the trendy things that you'll end up regretting. Number one is popular jean styles that you feel terrible in. Now this is an interesting day to be filming this because as I film this, I'm actually wearing a pair of jeans that is the cut of jeans that I think is just gonna be the only kind of jeans I wear from now on. This is a picture of me full body that I took approximately two hours before filming this video. I am someone who is a little pear-shaped. I typically look terrible in things like skinny jeans, those fucking mom jeans that are like, I swear to God, built to make anyone look bad. Like, I don't know why those became popular again. They sort of like were famous in the 90s for making women look sort of like matronly and like they were, I don't know, like smuggling, you know, bags of fruit in their pants like out of the grocery store. Like, it's just not a flattering look. Um, the straight leg jeans, like all of that stuff just does not look good on my body type. My body type looks good in like a gentle flare, but preferably I like a palazzo style, like a wider through the leg, tighter on the hip and the waist. And I have just decided that from now on, I'm going to buy the jeans that I like and not buy any other jeans, no matter what Instagram slash magazines are telling me everyone is wearing right now. Like I heard recently, they were like, low rise jeans are back in again over my dead pear-shaped body they are. Like I am never wearing those things ever again. And I think it's important, especially for women obviously, that when it comes to the type of clothes that we wear, we make those decisions based on what we feel our best in, what we look our best in, and not what happens to be the trendy thing right now. It is particularly difficult to find good flared jeans, especially in this very specific cut that I like, but I did find them. These are actually from Madewell, and my plan is to get one of the jeans, leave it long, um, because I like to wear it with heels, and get another pair, probably in the same color, although maybe a slightly different wash, and get them cut for flats, because I would just rather have two of this pair of jean than this jean, and then a B-list jean that I feel like shit in every time I wear. So all of that is to say, I highly recommend that you yourself also embrace this. We've spent a year in sweatpants. We've spent a year in yoga pants. We've spent a year not seeing anyone. It is not the right time to reemerge into society only to wear things that we never felt good in in the first place. You deserve to love every pair of jeans in your closet or to not buy them at all. Go forth in good jeans. Number two is Instagram cookware. What the hell is this? I mean, what the hell is this? Why would anyone need a millennial, like glossier pink cooking pan? Like, why is this something that you would want to spend your money on? I'm a firm believer that when it comes to kitchen standards, things that tend to be on the more expensive side, things like, you know, stainless steel cookware, um, you know, baking tools, things that you might end up spending a pretty penny on, your best bet is often to go to restaurant and kitchen supply wholesalers, outlets, places that have the really nice products at a highly discounted or wholesale price. Um, in New York City, there's actually several of them. Uh, one really good one is in Chinatown. Um, it's like a big restaurant supply store where you can find all of this higher end stuff that normally would be out of your price range, especially if you need to buy a full set. Um, but in general, when it comes to buying kitchen supplies, you want to buy things that will last both in terms of their overall quality, often they will come with lifetime guarantees for certain products, which I think is always worth opting for, but also in terms of aesthetics. 
like nothing is more of the moment and it's honestly already kind of over that like super sort of like faux childish like you know overgrown kid um you know girl boss pink like that is not of the moment and it's certainly not going to be of the moment in five years and a good pan you could keep for decades do you really want to be like in your 60s serving your grandchildren from your like girl boss pink pan <laughs> like i don't know maybe you do but i don't think you should also these pans have really bad reviews so take that <laughs> Number three is personalized vitamin blends. These are not FDA approved. I'm sure you've seen advertisements for them all over the place if you're anything like me. And I guess the pitch here is that you like fill out some info about yourself and then you get like a bunch of vitamins sent to you that are like tailored to your needs. But again, not FDA approved. And more importantly, there are times in which people should be taking vitamin supplements if they have specific deficiencies, which is something you can find out at the doctor if you specifically do tests to find out if you are experiencing deficiencies. And usually they will start by trying to correct that through your diet and other lifestyle choices. But yes, occasionally, sometimes you do need to supplement your diet with vitamins and that can be helpful. But if you are eating a balanced diet and not currently experiencing deficiencies, vitamins are literally like, they're just placebos. Like you just process them through your kidneys and get rid of them. So in many cases, even the regular degular vitamins are a scam and a waste of money, but especially like the goopy-esque, like glossier-esque, like why is every Instagram brand like this? Like these vitamins look like the pan. What's going on here? Either way, not worth spending your money on. Is it pronounced Glossier? You guys tell me. I am not giving them faux French credibility. Also, can I just complain about Glossier for a second? Every Glossier ad is the exact same thing. It's like a beautiful, very sort of like mysterious looking woman with absolutely perfect skin and bone structure and features who like literally like dabs two things onto her face and then reveals herself to look exactly the same, but with like slightly thicker eyebrows or whatever. And we're all supposed to be like, wow, what a transformation. And it's like, that girl would have been hot doing nothing. Like show me someone with actual problems and let's see what Glossier does with them. That's like LaCroix is pronounced LaCroix. And a lot of people are like LaCroix. And it's like, no, it's LaCroix. Number four is Instagram pop-ups. Things like the Rosé Mansion or the Museum of Ice Cream. Now listen, post COVID, I think we can all agree that experiential adult museums where you're supposed to be like fondling the stuff with a glass of alcohol in your hand and taking pictures is like, just honest to God, a Petri dish. Like that's so disgusting. Like people were always posting pictures of themselves during the heyday of the ice cream museum, like in that giant thing of sprinkles. And I'm like, you guys are gonna get like diseases that they thought were eradicated in like, the early 1900s. <laughs> so like obviously post pandemic, we're not trying to do that. But also moreover, like it's just really a reason to take the same five Instagram photos that everyone else takes. So hopefully these things will go by the wayside just with the passage of time. But if they don't, never worth the money. No one wants to see you in that giant disgusting pool of sprinkles. Number five is weird sleeve shirts. Do we all remember 2017? You couldn't get a normal sleeve if you wanted to. <laughs> and honest to God, I got so many crazy bell sleeves in 2017. I had some that were like cold shoulder and bell sleeves. Although I wish I had kept one of the cold shoulder shirts for my vaccination. That would have been convenient. But otherwise, like it was just chaotic sleeves, which are impossible to wear under like blazers or sweaters or things like that. So they're very inconvenient, but they're also kind of a hazard. I actually set myself on fire accidentally um, during our New Year's Eve fondue party one year. Um, so suffice Suffice to say, like, it's also, aside from being, you know, a bit of a danger, it's just very of the moment. I feel like the crazy sleeves and like, I don't know, I mean, there's like a little bit of sleeve happening here and I got the buttons. I don't know, there's some stuff happening, but it's clearly built to function like as a blouse, like it's not an architectural piece. And I do feel like when you look at certain shirts, you're like, that's 2017 that's from the year of the weird shirt era. Like it's definitely of a moment and I feel like it just doesn't age very well. And I feel like I can't speak for all, but most women probably have several weird shirts we bought in 2017 that we, after a year got rid of. Don't ride the weird sleeve train. It's a train to nowhere. 
Number six is social media foods. Like, I don't know what happened, but at a certain point, Instagram Explore just became like a bunch of people, like basically a bunch of restaurants, like outdoing each other with these, like, it's like a pizza shaped like an ice cream cone filled with like six pounds of cheese and toppings, or like those disgusting milkshakes where they like frost the entire outside of the milkshake. They put the milkshake, like 16 candy canes and a slice of red velvet cake on top of it. Or like one of the most disgusting ones I ever saw that I was like, what the fuck is even the point of this? Was this like this hamburger that had like a little like ramekin on top of it that when you lifted it up, it was just like this giant like fountain of cheese exploded over the, <laughs> it's like, how do you even eat that? <laughs> it's so gross, it's so gross. And listen, sometimes when you go out to eat, there are certain food items that you order and they're like very Instagrammable. Like you get like a plate of like really beautiful French toast or like a, you know, really pretty hamburger sometimes. But the food should fundamentally be about how good it tastes and how easily slash normally you can eat it. Which on a side note, I don't even think this is for Instagram purposes. At some point, we just decided to go vertical with our hamburgers. <laughs> Especially at the really fancy restaurants. I feel like I've gotten multiple burgers that are like, eight inches tall and like this wide, impossible to eat. So sort that one out restaurants, but <laughs> more generally, we don't want any of your Instagram food. It's gross and it also feels wasteful. Like a lot of times I see those Instagram videos and I'm like, I know that no one was eating this. So it seems like a bad thing for the environment and society as a whole. Anyway, ex nay on the Instagram food, oud fay. Number seven is very expensive paint. This is a life tip. Follow Pharaoh and Ball on Instagram, ogle all of their pictures, find the paint that you like, and then go to a less expensive paint store and get a dupe. If I were to have painted my hallway with the Pharaoh and Ball color that I liked, I would have spent approximately $400 on paint, and that's just not a way to live life, especially not in a rental. Um, I think that paint, especially now that it's become very popular on social media to have like those like weird painted arches on a wall and like getting all, people are getting, going very rogue with their painting now. Like it's become very aspirational to have really fancy, nice paint. Um, and you can almost always get a great dupe if you go to like a decent paint shop. Like there's a Benjamin Moore around the corner from me. Um, they can match anything basically. And they'll work with you to like tweak a paint color, even if it's not perfect on the first go and they'll make little samples. Like do not spend money on fancy paint. Number eight is fancy planners if you are not already an established journaler. You need to work your way up to an expensive planner. Start by like getting just like a basic spiral notebook, see if you use it, see if you actually hold yourself accountable to writing in it, see if you actually get any benefit out of physically writing down various things about your life, whatever those things might be. And eventually once you have established that you will actually use a journal to its intended purpose, you can perhaps justify getting a really fancy expensive one. If you jump headfirst into it thinking that buying the expensive planner is going to be a reason to become the sort of person who uses a planner, you are going to end up like many of us with basically a graveyard of unused or 5% used planners, which is the saddest thing of all because especially if they have a calendar in them, they're not evergreen. Like what am I supposed to do with that 2019 rifle paper company planner I got and then never opened? Number nine is $75 candles. They should be illegal, that's my opinion. So occasionally I receive really fancy candles, um, but I have now taken to, if I even have a suspicion that people are getting me fancy candles, like for a housewarming or whatever, like I will go out of my way to tell them, get a dupe. Like find a smell that you like and get a dupe because I cannot abide by people who have like, why would you spend so much money on something you literally burn? Like my max for a candle is like $25 for like a big one. But I, my favorite is just to go to the TJ Maxx slash home goods and get like all of those discount candles. Mwah. Number 10 is prepackaged healthy snacks. Now listen, we all love Trader Joe's. We all love going in there, entering a complete food state and coming out with like, six months worth of snacks and somehow you still feel like they're healthy because they have that like Trader Joe's sheen on them even though none of them are remotely healthy. But that's a once in a while treat, right? Like we shouldn't be doing this all the time and we moreover should realize that getting these healthy prepackaged snacks, really no matter what they are, are ultimately kind of a waste of money and not something that we should be regularly incorporating into our shopping. 
Nine times out of 10, when it comes to things like fancy snacks, you could easily get the same nutritional profile just by eating a small assortment of things that are otherwise much cheaper. For example, instead of getting like the fancy prepared bars that have like nuts and seeds and all of that, you can just get the bulk nuts and seeds. You know, you don't have to go out of your way to get all of these super processed things. And yes, of course, on the go is helpful, but it takes all of 10 minutes to do little doggy bags for yourself that have a prepared snack mix for you to take. Also, let's be honest, with the vast majority of those healthy snacks, when you actually look at how they break down in terms of macronutrition, they're often terrible for you. Like half of the protein bars in the market today are essentially Snickers bars with a little bit more protein. And that's delicious. Like I love a Snickers bar and occasionally love to eat a protein bar, but I'm not kidding myself. Like they're not particularly good for you and they're also not worth the money. Number 11 is canned vodka sodas. I truly knew that we were a society in decline when I was at a bar and I saw someone order a White Claw. Order a vodka soda, what is wrong with you? And listen, occasionally, yes, like you're going to the beach, you're going out on a boat, you need to bring some canned things with you, fine, fine, whatever. But I feel like canned vodka sodas have really infiltrated the society that people will, they're like on menus all the time now at various bars and restaurants and like people order them the same way people order a beer. And for me, it's like, okay, but people order a beer because beer is a distinct beverage that you can't recreate with two ingredients that already exist in the bar. Like it makes no sense. And also they're not very good. Like I feel like it's always better to just get a normal vodka soda. You can even have them use a flavored vodka if you really want to. Listen, I'm 32. I'm not above a Stoli blueberry and soda every now and again. <laughs> Shit is delicious. Also, wait, I also need to say about the canned vodka sodas. <laughs> Someone on Twitter said this and it's the truest thing I've ever heard. It was like, it is the roughest drunk you can possibly be. They're like less alcoholic than a beer in a lot of cases. And they're also like slightly flavored with like artificial flavoring. So like, and plus in a lot of the cases when you're drinking them, it's like out in the sun for hours at a time. <laughs> it's just like, just absolutely gnarly. Like no one should be eat, drinking six cans of like vodka and sweetener. Like it's disgusting. <laughs> Number 12 is those dumb plastic visor masks that protect no one from anything like these. Anyone wearing those, they've already told you everything you need to know about themselves. They're dumb. Number 13 is it bags. Listen, I'm not gonna sit here and go off about the Telfar bags because a lot of you seem to have a very special relationship with that bag. And frankly, I'm really scared of upsetting stands on the internet. And it seems like this bag has stands for some reason. All I will say is that anytime you're spending a lot of money on a bag that is extremely of the moment, you're almost guaranteeing yourself that you have a limited window in which you can use this bag before you look like kind of a joke because you're wearing that bag that everyone had last year. And listen, I'm sure I've spent money on dumber things, but one thing I will say that has served me very well when it comes to accessories is buying bags and shoes especially that are essentially of no era. They're just like, they look normal now, they'll look normal 10 years from now, and they probably would have looked normal 10 years ago. Because the ideal thing when you're buying something like a leather bag is that it will last you for decades, and if, if you take care of it. And yes, when it comes to it bags, they do eventually come around like that crazy saddlebag that Carrie was wearing in like season five or whatever of Sex and the City is like now apparently a thing again. So like, okay, maybe like 20 years from when you originally used the bag, you could use it again as like a vintage item, but like that's not an investment strategy. Number 14 is skincare slash hair care that is especially formulated for your type. All of these startups that are promising like to give you like an online questionnaire and then respond with the right products for you, I feel like you would be much better off diverting that money toward like one session with a dermatologist, especially when it comes to skincare and like getting an actual doctor up in here to like take a look at things and tell you what's going on. Because the thing is for most people's needs, you can get what you need at a drugstore if you know what you're looking for. Like you don't need really expensive and fancy products. And a good dermatologist or a good esthetician will be like, oh, like don't waste your money on X, Y, and Z. Like you just need 
these things that you can get over the counter at like a Dwayne Reed or what have you. But I feel like people have now gotten it in their head that like buying anything from a drugstore is just like inherently bad for some reason. Um, and I think that's not the case. I think you just need to know what you're looking for and realize that most of what these really expensive brands are often selling you boil down to a few ingredients that you can find in much less expensive dupes. Number 15 is finicky houseplants if you have not already demonstrated yourself to be a good plant mom. Now here's the thing. I understand that, especially now that we've all been locked inside like Quasimodo for the last year, we've gotten way more into our plants and that's understandable. We have very few other friends these days. But it's important to remember that plants are ultimately things that you can easily kill and you do not want to be spending a lot of money, which some of these plants can cost, if you are not absolutely sure that you can let that plant thrive and not essentially be flushing your money down the drain. Case in point, when we were getting plants for the TFD office, I got a rubber tree that I was really excited about. Turns out rubber trees are a lot more picky than you would think they would be and I proceeded to kill it within about a week. That was a waste of $75. So. Whatever it might be for you, just know your limits when it comes to houseplants and don't get too big for your britches. I'm good with the pothos. Those things, they can thrive under any conditions. There's a couple other ones that, look at that. Look at her go. Look at her go. And she was $20 at my old grocery store. Like crazy. Learn your limits and don't go chasing waterfalls when it comes to plants. Number 16 is expensive workout clothes. You just don't need them old old navy or whatever for your workout clothes. Also, if you actually work out a bunch, your workout clothes are never going to last that long anyway. So don't be throwing your money on them. Freaking Lululemon. Number 17 is heels that look good in pictures, but murder your feet. Once we all get back out into society, I'm actually sure that a lot of us are going to have a hard time wearing basically any shoes that aren't like slip-ons at this point because of how used to, you know, not really wearing constricting clothing and accessories we all are. But it's important to remember that one thing we can all leave behind are shoes. And especially now I know that there's a ton of trendy shoes I see on Instagram that are like six inch heels with like one tiny strap at the bottom and one tiny strap at the top. Like that stuff can go. We don't have to live this way anymore. Number 18 is pompous grass or any other home decor that sheds. Listen, I have a dog that sheds. Not a ton, but she sheds right now, especially because it's spring, it's the spring shed. And that is difficult enough to take care of. You do not need to be bringing decor items into your home that also shed. That includes things like the aforementioned pompous grass, that includes things like certain types of rugs and pillows and blankets. That includes essentially anything that is going to shed in any capacity, anything with glitter on it, God forbid. Like, you do not need to be welcoming things into your home that are just an excuse for constant vacuuming. Similarly, although it might be trendy on Instagram, you do not want to have open shelving all throughout your kitchen unless your life's aspiration is to spend the maximum amount of time possible dusting things. Number 19 is any product you see advertised under a viral tweet. You do not need a sunset lamp. You do not need a penis pillow. You do not need that weird vibrator they're always talking about. You do not need the star projector. You do not need that disgusting green tea mask that I can't stop getting to autoplay on my feed that shows people's pores being cleared out. You do not need anything that is being marketed under a viral tweet, block, report, and move on with your life and your wallet intact. Lastly, number 20, and this may be controversial, but any non-machine washable rug when you have a pet. Obviously, home decor has boomed in the year of the pandemic and therefore of nesting, but one thing that you have seen all over the place undoubtedly that does not need to enter your home unless you actually can take care of it properly is a cute rug. Those pretty vintage rugs, those shag rugs, those rugs that make a room just look so special. If you have a pet, your pet is gross. And honestly, maybe a cat less so because they don't really go outside. But if you have a dog like I do, that dog goes outside and walks in all kinds of God knows what, is getting into all sorts of disgusting stuff, is shedding, is just, animals are gross. Like they're animals for, they're gross. And all of that stuff is getting on your rug. And if you cannot properly wash your rug, and there are plenty of retailers now that do machine washable rugs, toss this bad boy up, throw them in the washing machine, your rug is disgusting. And I say that as someone who's had many disgusting rugs. Give yourself as a pet owner the treat of nice rugs. Do not forget to hit the subscribe and join buttons and to come back every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday for new and awesome videos. Goodbye.